What up peeps? Welcome to the Gabe Fix. Whether it's your first time or you've been here multiple times before. Hey girl, hey. Y'all, I am finally back. This video has taken me so long to make and I'm not even sure why it has taken me this long, but here we are. The one month update has now turned into the two month update for my mommy makeover surgery. If you're new here, if you've never watched any of my videos and you don't know what I had done, I had a mommy makeover on December 9th, 2022. I am officially eight weeks out. Let's see. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, eight weeks and three days when I am recording this. So probably by the time this goes up, I'll be at nine weeks. But right now I'm eight weeks and three days. I had a breast lift with no implant, um, some lipo, a tummy tuck, muscle repair, and that's everything. So the lipo areas were inner outer thigh, upper lower back, and the flanks and abs. So here I am eight weeks post op and I have to say that I feel really good and I feel like that's the most asked question that I get is how am I feeling and I am feeling really really good like I feel more and more like myself every day at this point I feel pretty much back to normal um you know minus a couple of other things that we'll get into but i i feel normal like i don't feel like i am still in recovery mode although i know that i am just in general i feel really good um i'm almost back to all of my normal activity we'll get to all that as well but um, yeah, I feel good. And if I seem like I'm all over the place in this video, it probably is because I am. Like I don't have an outline. I am trying to figure out like all of the things to hit. I probably should have wrote down something so that I wouldn't forget. But I have a bunch of questions that my Instagram subscribers asked me a month ago when I was supposed to do this as a one month update. So I'm gonna go through and answer those questions. Let me say that I will also be showing at the end, I will have some footage of kind of like what I look like now, um, you know, what I look like swollen, what I look like not swollen, so you guys can see that. So stay tuned for that. That's probably gonna come towards the end of the video. Um, but yeah, overall, I will say at this point, at eight weeks, one thing I am completely over is my faha. <laughs> I will say I will scream it from the rooftops these undergarments are taking me out these fajas are taking me out I quit I'm over them my goal is to make it 12 to 16 weeks and I just don't know if I'm gonna make it like literally I cannot stand it and I think it's because I was never really like a Spanx person in like to begin with like I was never wearing a bunch of girdles and Spanx and things only when I like absolutely had to so to go from not really wearing them to wearing one 24 seven or 23 seven, you take a little hour off during the day, it's been rough. It has been so rough and I'm still, I'm just still not used to it. I just don't like it. And on top of the Faja, I'm still wearing an ab board and I'm still wearing a backboard. So it's just a lot and like you know fitting in clothing and trying to disguise it and you know sometimes depending on what I'm wearing I may not wear it so like I went to a like gallons day brunch today I have on this really cute dress and I was like I'm just gonna put on some stockings some spank stockings and I'm not wearing anything right now um, so I would say the number one irritation for me is the garments and I think that that's one of the things that I want to stress if you are thinking about having this done you have to consider the aftercare because I just don't feel like I prepared myself enough for the aftercare, if that makes sense. Like, I did all the research, I watched all the videos, I knew there would be pain, I knew there would be some discomfort, I knew there would be some swelling. I, I, I still don't feel like you'll really know until you go through it, but I, what I wasn't aware of was the aftercare. And aftercare in terms of the garments that you wear, but also in terms of the lymphatic massages. And I just wanna start right there. Lymphatic massages <laughs> saved my life. I think the last update that I did was like when I did surgery day and one week post-op. And I think at day six or seven, I finally got my first lymphatic massage and it was a game changer. It literally, <laughs> it literally saved my life. Like I am not being dramatic. I was so tight, so swollen, so uncomfortable, and it just felt like a huge relief 
after I had that done. So while I was in Houston, I had probably with well, the three weeks that I was there, I didn't start until like the week one. And for the next two weeks, I think I had six or seven lymphatic massages. And the lady that I found, she was a lifesaver. I just Googled her. I Googled lymphatic massages in the area that I was staying in because my surgeon didn't necessarily recommend them. Like he wasn't against them per se, but he just felt like they weren't completely necessary. And you know, honestly, like what I have noticed is that surgeons, they know surgery but they don't necessarily know recovery and they don't care to really find out much about it. I think that they're like, look, I'm doing my job. If you want to do all that other stuff, you got to research it on your own. So, you know, he always said that he wasn't against it, but it wasn't necessarily necessary and there wasn't a whole lot of research, blah, blah, blah. I'm here to tell you right now, if you were having plastic surgeon, if you're having plastic surgery, you need to make sure your aftercare and your massages are booked before you get on that table. Trust me, okay? Because you don't want to wait and then have to like find somebody afterwards. Just do your due diligence and book them before you have surgery. My massage therapist was a godsend. I honestly feel like God look, took me right to her because she was so helpful. She gave me the right kind of garments. She made me realize that like the garments that I, were, that I was in were too big, which is why I was swelling so much because there was so much space for me to swell up to the size of these garments, which were like two or three times bigger than what they needed to be so she you know got me in a smaller garment and got me my lymphatic massages which were like night and day the tightness it was just like it didn't completely go away but it felt so much better um, I could see the swelling going down I actually did a video with her on my very last session with her before I left so I'm gonna stick that footage in now because she gives some really good information about what lymphatic massages are and what you should be looking for how they should go you know what should be done so I'm actually gonna stick that in here now so you guys can see what a true lymphatic massage consists of i am in here getting my lymphatic massage mm -hmm. this is my massage therapist tell me do you want to kind of just talk about like the maybe the benefits of lymphatic massage absolutely yes um the benefits of lymphatic massage after plastic surgery is it helps with the inflammation and swelling it uh, gets the lymph flowing through the body to help promote healing it's very important to get lymph flowing through the body after any time the body's been compromised in any way due to trauma or disease or even surgery getting the lymph flowing through the body helps speed up the recovery mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now is ultrasound it's electrical stimulation it helps with inflammation swelling and scar tissue that forms after uh, liposuction is done mm -hmm. it helps soften the tissue from her tummy tuck and it promotes uh, healing promotes healing now you also she also told me like some things that aren't necessarily needed so if you have someone doing a lymphatic massage you said there were a few things that they may be using that is not the ultrasound correct uh, there's a couple of things that I've heard there is um, ultrasonic cavitation mm -hmm. that is a type of treatment that's done that looks similar to what I'm doing but it uh, when, if cavitation is done cavitation is done uh, when um, fat cells are actually uh, removed or taken out from the body mm -hmm. so by using cavitation it helps kill or uh, the fat cells that's not advised to use after this type of surgery or liposuction because with liposuction they actually take out the fat cells mm -hmm. so that is not um, advisable to do after liposuction or a tummy tuck and then there's also radio frequency that's another thing that mm -hmm. it's very hot both of those two treatments um, are very hot treatments which causes the body to swell more mm -hmm. so it is not advisable to do either one of those now what I'm doing like I said is ultrasound it is electrical stimulation it stimulates the skin and it goes down to the dermis to help promote healing and helps with inflammation swelling and the tightness of the skin uh -huh. And then after she uses that, then she does the massage with her hand. So I will show Correct. after she finishes with that, she does like 
the stomach area and then she'll do my thighs mm -hmm. and then my back because those are all the areas that were worked on for me so I'll correct. show you when we get to that part say that again it's very very important when you have plastic surgery to find yourself a licensed massage therapist who knows plastic surgery mm -hmm. because you cannot be doing lymphatic massage when you don't know surgery right. you don't know tummy tucks i have been in surgery with plastic surgeons so that i can understand what they exactly did to my patients i've had over 17 years of experience with plastic surgery so it's very important to just like you go and find a surgeon yeah. and you do your research on your surger, surgeon it's also very important to do your research on your post recovery because do, step one is finding a good surgeon step two is finding a good therapist who's going to help you with the recovery mm -hmm. both of them are essential you can't do step one without, without step, two. step two now there is another thing you talked about where some massage therapists will actually drain correct and Those. is that a a different form of a lymphatic massage or is that just completely different? It is a whole different ball game. Okay. Those are called draining sessions. Sometimes doctors advise patients to go and get lymphatic massages but what they're really wanting is they're helping wanting the patient drain the tumescent fluid that was uh, injected into mm -hmm. the patient for liposuction okay. and those are done uh, those are that's where the um, it gives really lymphatic massage a bad name because what they're doing is they're actually poking the holes, the site where the liposuction was done mm -hmm. to help push the fluid out. The, and some doctors want patients to do that. Yeah. Other doctors let you just drain at home for two, three, four days. So mm -hmm. I've seen patients who have done those and it's very painful, mm -hmm. especially right after surgery. And I've seen patients who have not done them and the benefit is not there. There mm -hmm. really is no benefit. Okay. The body is going to excrete or push out any fluid that is not required or needed. So I personally don't believe in draining sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, if your lymphatic massage therapist is not actually opening up your major lymph nodes, you're not actually getting a lymphatic massage. Mm -hmm. By opening up the major lymph nodes, which are behind the ear, down the neck, along the clavicle, are axillary lymph nodes and inguinal and then actually physically massaging the area yeah sorry um you're not actually getting a lymphatic massage mm, and that's what you start off doing that's what before i do before she did that that's what she she does first she opens up the lymph the nodes, lymph nodes. Get the lymph flowing yeah. through the body to promote healing okay that's very important good to know so now what i'm going to be doing is the actual lymphatic massage I'm actually pushing the lymph toward her major lymph nodes, which are right here, mm -hmm. to help with inflammation, swelling, the tightness, and just flush out everything, all her swelling. She is looking so, so well for, I think she's um, 18, 18, 18 days, days today. Yeah. 18 days. She's done so well, but she started her massages very, very, very early. Yeah, I think day six. Day is six, when she I started. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very important to get your massages. Find someone who can guide you, not only with the massages and ultrasound, but you also need to have compression guidance. Yes. Compression yes. guidance is so important for this recovery. Mm -hmm. If you can't find someone to do all those three, you're not going to optimize the best results for your surgery. You need compression guidance. You need someone to actually give you a lymphatic massage to flesh out the swelling. Mm -hmm. And then you also need ultrasound to break up the uh, scar tissue that forms from liposuction. Mm -hmm. So, um, just yeah. like I said, it's very important to um, have all those three for you to optimize the best results okay. for the surgery. Thank you so much. You for are so welcome. Y'all have Tell any the questions? Where they can find you? You can where... find me, and uh, if y'all have any questions, on my website is um, www.hrecovery.com. Our uh, we're here in the South Houston, Southwest Houston, Sugarland, Missouri City area. Um, I'd be happy to help anyone, train anyone. But like I said, it's so important if you're going to have plastic surgery, please please find someone who is actually knowledgeable in plastic surgery, who is a licensed massage therapist, and someone who is licensed in actual lymph drainage therapy, which is lymphatics. We're ending with the flushing, mm -hmm. These which are, is the same thing she started with. First largest lymph nodes along the clavicle, up our neck, mm -hmm. behind our ears. 
so that everything I massaged the past 50 minutes can get flushed out of her lymphatic system, which will mm. help push it out of her body, eliminate. Okay. So when you do it in the beginning, it's just to open, open it up? It. <laughs> okay. You're opening it up. Now what I'm doing is flushing. Mm. Your second largest are right here. These are axillary lymph nodes. These are the lymph nodes that most women, when they have breast cancer, mm -hmm. these are the lymph nodes that get mm -hmm. affected by that. Thank you. All right, so isn't she the best? Like, I miss her. So if you're in the Houston Sugarland area, look up down me, she's dope. Uh, tell her that I sent you. Um, so what I will say is when I came home to Indy, finding someone who did what she did was a little difficult. So I, I had a recommendation for someone, so I reached out to her, I did a consultation. And she said something to me in the consultation, which now makes sense. She was like, if you're just looking for a lymphatic massage, like I'm not the girl. Like I do complete aftercare. And what I didn't realize that she meant by that was that she's more concerned in trying to shape the body. So she did the red light therapy. She did the, you know, massaging, like the hot, like the massage. It wasn't the, she didn't use an ultrasound machine, but she used like a, a heat massager thing and she would you know kind of do the massages from there but she was more versed in like faha training and like you know wrapping myself well trying to create that like hourglass figure that some women really go for like that was not necessarily my goal but she she was more concerned with the aftercare process not necessarily lymphatic massages if that makes sense like she was still giving me somewhat of a massage but it was not what I was used to so when I had the consultation for her I went that one time and I was like okay I'm gonna stick with her I'm gonna see how it goes I did six sessions with her she was great um but it was just it was like night and day <laughs> so this is also another tip to do your research because everything that Del me spoke about and was like that's not a true lymphatic massage if they're doing this if they're doing that if they're doing that the lady here was doing all of those things so i feel like what she did was well you know i mean i feel like what she did was good she also like at one point taped me taped me up taped up my stomach with um what is that tape called kinesthetic tape or i don't know the word but you know like the tape that you use if you have like some pain, I think is what it is. I can't think of the name, but she taped me up with that. And she was like, you can wear the tape for up to 10 days. I think I only made it like four or five days. Cause I was like, this is not for me. I'm not gonna be walking around with this tape on my belly. It was itching. It was just too much. Um, but she is very concerned in keeping you wrapped, making sure your garments are tight. Uh, she introduced me to the lady who altered my faha so that it could be taken in on the waist. That was the whole situation because the lady made it too tight. So then I had to get a seam ripper and loosen it up. It was a situation. Um, but yeah, it was just different. So I did my six sessions with her. She did a great job, but I was really missing the true lymphatic massages that I was used to. So I found another lady here that I've been going to. I've gone to her two times and I have like two more sessions scheduled with her and she is giving an actual lymphatic massage. Like she is a licensed therapist. The other lady that I was going to hear, um, I don't know that she was a licensed therapist. She was just a prior nurse. Like she's trained as a nurse and I think she just learned aftercare really well, but I don't think that she is a licensed therapist, if that makes sense. So um, the lady that I go to now, she does really well. She does, you know, she didn't even have an ultrasound machine. She uses her hands. It's completely manual. It is the most gentle uh, touch that I have ever had. So like a lot of people asked if lymphatic massages hurt. They should not hurt because it should be a very gentle touch. Uh, I think that Delmi had the perfect amount of pressure and in the beginning it was like a hurt so good type of thing like it wasn't really pain but my body was still recovering so I think that when people say lymphatic massages hurt I think it's because they are still suffering 
from you know just general pain from having surgery like they're uncomfortable their body is tight they're swollen so it feels like pain but it shouldn't like hurt you know if that makes sense but this lady i remember my first session i was thinking to myself is she doing anything like her touch is so light but literally when i get up off the table i like i am physically smaller like the it you can tell that she has flushed out the fluid so she she's great i'm gonna stick beside her i'm probably gonna keep up my massages for at least another four weeks because i want to make it to 12 weeks i remember delmi saying that i need to at least prep for a good three months of having massages so you know, I'm going to play it by ear and see how I'm feeling around week 12. And, you know, probably from then just schedule them as on an as-need basis. But I'm going to probably keep them up weekly. So that's my spiel about lymphatic massages and recovery. Because before I get into anything else, like, I need you to understand that the recovery is so important. And if you do not take it as serious as having the surgery, you're not going to be happy with your results. You're not going to heal you know, in the best way, because if you don't compress in a good way, then you can have hardness or, you know, you can have like a still have a little pouch above your incision. So it's just super important. And it's definitely something to consider when it when it comes to cost. I have purchased at least six Fajas, <laughs> at least because tell me she would just have me go down a size. So I went down like three sizes with her. And then when I got here, the lady here, she didn't really care for the, the Faha I was in. So she had another recommendation. So I bought that Faha. Then I bought another one. I got that altered. So I have about six Fajas that I've had from start to finish. And those things are not cheap. They're at least like $80 to $100 a piece so if not even more so you have to keep that in mind and I don't necessarily recommend buying them in different sizes you want to get a good one and just keep getting it altered because it doesn't make sense to have all these different sizes because it's like well what am I going to do with these now <laughs> So um, that's my spiel on lymphatic massages. Let's see what else. At this point, I have now been cleared to resume working out, which is great. I can um, do body weight only exercises and like all my cardio. So I started that last week or the week before. Um, I think at week six, I was cleared to do body weight only exercises. And that was great because I was missing working out. You guys know that I love to work out and I love to lift. So I'm really missing lifting, but I only have a couple more weeks. I think at week 10, I can resume uh, a lifting routine. So I'm really looking forward to that. I will say that my first workout was, it was interesting. I was bored because I felt like I am not really getting anything done with this body weight exercises, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, and I probably did too much because I felt like, oh, I don't have weights. It's just body weight. Let me go hard and do all the things. When I tell you, I was sore for like two or three days after that. I did a leg day. And I just, I did the absolute most. So I am definitely taking it easy, easing into it, but I'm still not really like lifting much of anything. I can now like lift my arms all the way up at the six week mark or maybe the fifth week mark because I had my phone call with Dr. Wynn probably at week five-ish. Um, he was saying that I was clear to like start raising my arms more, but just go at my own pace. Like what I felt like I could do, like don't overdo it. So now I'm completely good raising my arms. There's no issues there. Um, let's see, what else? Swelling, let's talk about swelling because that is a thing. It is still very much a thing. Um, I still swell which is to be expected because I, you know, was told that swelling can last for up to a year. Like, I'm going to be dealing with swelling for a long time. And it's interesting now because the extra fat is gone on my stomach. I can tell immediately, like, when foods that I eat bloat me because, you know after eating like I could look like I'm pregnant like literally I could look like I'm pregnant depending on what I eat and how much of it I eat um because that's just I mean I guess that's just how it happens so um I like I said I went to an event today I did not wear my faha I took it off this morning before I got dressed and I've had you know appetizers and breakfast and I had a couple of drinks so let me show you guys what my belly is looking like now 
so you can see what I'm talking about the swelling you see this doesn't that kind of look like I'm pregnant a little bit like this is my belly now I just finished eating probably like a half an hour ago so the swelling is definitely there now I'd say maybe another hour or so let me get in my faja the swelling will be gone relatively quickly like it doesn't last super long but it does happen so that is something to be mindful of there will be moments where you look like you carrying a baby because of the swelling and the bloating you know depending on what you eat how much you eat I am noticing that um the swelling is annoying I still swell in my calves so like the lower half of my legs from the knee down is still kind of swollen like even when I wear my compression socks like they'll work for a little bit but I can tell that like my lymphatic system is just I think slow to get back on track because I still swell a little bit around my ankles especially like if I've been standing really long or walking a lot um and yeah like my my the, the lower half of my legs are just swollen and the massage therapist that I go to now she was like yeah we got to work on these legs because they are definitely retaining water so I actually go twice this week and I'll probably go twice next week just to kind of get that under control um but yes definitely swelling in my lower extremities swelling in my belly um and let's see what else sleeping let's talk about sleeping so I am able to lay completely flat now I've actually been laying completely flat since like week two and a half three like I started laying flat during my massages in Houston like uh, she would have me like lay out and have my knees up and then extend them out and just kind of do like that just to kind of practice being flat and you know keep the mobility there I sleep on two pillows now not completely propped up but just like a little elevation I find that sometimes that's a little bit comfortable a little bit more comfortable for me I still sleep on my back I have not slept on my stomach yet I don't think that I can sleep on my stomach until I think three months post breast but I'm not really a stomach sleeper anyway so I sleep the, for the majority of the time I sleep on my back or my side and I don't have any issues no issues with my incision my scar anything like that like it's no pain um it's all good so sleep is good I am definitely comfortable now in the beginning I was very uncomfortable just trying to get the right position and the elevation and propping my feet up and blah 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 I don't prop my feet up anymore but I'm wondering if I should start again just because of the swelling like I I'm wondering if that would be helpful if I started to sleep with my feet propped up and elevated again so I might actually try that um this week and just kind of see how that helps the swelling in my legs um breasts let me talk about my breasts really quick because if you follow me on IG subscriptions I show and talk a lot about my tummy tuck but I never really touch on my breast I think in the beginning I was I never really talked about them because they just didn't bother me like there were no issues everything was great and everything is still great but I will talk about an, obs an observation that I made with my breasts and that is that they have dropped so I have noticed that so in the beginning obviously I was fresh out of surgery I was swollen everything was just bigger so my boobs were like I feel like they were up here like I would look down and they would be like sitting up here because I just remember being like gosh they are so high up on my chest well they have definitely dropped and they've kind of in my opinion kind of settled into themselves so the swelling has subsided in my breast and like I can tell because they do have a bit more hang time than they did fresh out of surgery which I did not get an implant so that was obviously to be expected because it's just skin so you know what I'm saying skin naturally will sag um now they're not sagging they have just dropped if that makes sense um because of the replacement of the areola like they don't look saggy they're not you know like they don't look like they did okay they, they still look phenomenal okay uh <laughs> but they have dropped some and i i do recall just looking at them and thinking like dang should i have gotten an implant because like i don't know what i was expecting like i knew that they would drop i knew there was a chance that they would drop 
but I don't know I don't know like I love my breasts because they look natural to me like they look completely natural like I was born with them and that's what I really loved about not having an implant but then I was thinking like but I don't have that natural cleavage look, if that makes sense. Like the round fullness because there is no implant in there. Like there is fullness. Let me show you. So here is kind of what they're looking like now. And I don't have a bra on. This is just them sitting in the dress. But as you can see, it's not like the fake cleavage, if that makes sense, where they're super like super round at the top that's not what i have they look normal to me but they're sitting pretty like there is nothing holding these girls right now they sit real pretty okay so uh <laughs> i put a bra actually on top of this because i was trying to disguise the ruching in the dress so you didn't see it under my sweater that's why I have that bra on, but I don't need the bra. They're literally sitting pretty. I wanted to make sure that I address that because I get a lot of questions about my boobs and how they're doing. The scarring on my breast is phenomenal. I feel like my incisions period are phenomenal. Like my uh, surgeon did the best job with the incisions. They are so tiny, like around my areola, you literally can't even tell and like the line so i have the anchor scar so it goes straight down and then it's under here so small not very dark at all i do use cream i'm using a different cream now um than what i was using before because they gave me a uh, one cream to use for five weeks i can't remember the name of it and uh, if i remember i will insert a picture of the cream that i used for five weeks i put that on twice a day so then once I hit five weeks, I was able to use a different cream twice a day and also silicone tape. So I will insert pictures of those as well. I will say that the silicone tape I've kind of been hit or miss with. So I would say that I have applied the silicone tape probably two different times because you like cut it up to match the, you know, the length of your incision, the width of your incision. <laughs> Excuse me, oh my goodness, something just happened and I cannot stop sneezing. Okay, I just had like a sneeze attack. Oh my goodness, I could not stop sneezing. Speaking of, it is still a little sore when I do sneeze. Like when I sneeze, I still feel it. Where they did the muscle repair, it is still kind of like a jarring feeling to sneeze. Uh, just an FYI, like it still kind of hurts a little bit when I sneeze. Not. I'm trying to think when I cough, not so much. I don't cough a whole lot, but definitely I sneeze a lot. And I like find myself like reaching to hold on to myself because it hurts. Um, so what was I talking about? Oh, the silicone tape. So I've only really applied it twice and every application gets me about three days before I have to like replace it and start all over again. So I think I did it for maybe like a week and a half or so maybe almost two weeks so I'll put the cream on and then I'll you know cut the tape up and then I'll put the tape on there and then I'll remove it to reapply cream at the end of the night and then put it back because you can reuse the tape since the silicone tape is reusable I can get a good three to four days out of it before I feel like I need to like replace it completely and then I take it off when I take a shower and stuff like that um so I need to apply it because it's been probably like a week since I've worn it I think it's just it's just annoying to me like it doesn't bother me it doesn't like hurt or itch or anything like that I just I don't know I need to get better with my silicone tape so I feel like those are all the updates that I can think of off top without looking at the questions I have not even looked at any of these questions yet so this could be a long video but yeah I think that that's everything that I can think of right now so let's get into these questions somebody asked I seem to be doing really good do you really get swollen or is all the swollen gone I kind of talked about that the swelling definitely still happens it is not all gone uh it is definitely not all gone i wish it was but not yet am i still feeling super tight so this is a good question no the tightness that i had in the beginning has pretty much subsided um but it's not um all the way gone like it's it's just a weird feeling so like when i press on my belly it definitely feels 
kind of tight or just kind of weird like it's a, a weird sensation I am a little numb in my belly still like like some of the area around here I like you probably can't you can't see but some of the area I can feel some of it lower like under my belly button is still kind of numb um I will say also speaking of numbness my breasts are still numb specifically like the nipple and the areola they're still numb and i'm a little nervous about that i always knew that it was a chance anytime you have any breast work done there is a chance but dr Wynn says that it could take months for the sensation to come back so i am holding out hope because i really would love to feel my girls again like i can feel my whole breast all over except for the areola and the nipple it is still numb the nipples still work like I still get hard I still get aroused like that has not changed but just the feeling is not there so I am praying that it comes back because I really I really need that um so yeah that is one I guess downside of getting work done on your breasts like you don't ever know which side of the fence you're going to land on because you know some of the people in the tummy tuck group that i follow say that they had extra sensitivity after they had their breast work done and some people said it took weeks some people said it took months some people have even said it took over a year for their sensation to come back and then some people the sensation never comes back so i really don't know which bucket i'm going to fall in hopefully it's just going to take a little longer for it to come back but i'm praying that it comes back um Speaking of, somebody asked, have I been able to free the nips yet? And yes, I have actually, like around the house. I've, you know, not had on a bra or anything. Like the Faja that I wear now on a daily, it has a built-in bra with it. So I don't have to wear a separate bra. Um, there have been a couple of times where I've worn um, something without wearing them. It does feel weird to not have on a bra. Like I'm not used to that. Um, I, I can now wear underwire. I think I had to wait. It was six weeks, I believe, or three weeks, three weeks or six weeks before I could wear underwire again. And, um, I actually just didn't think about it because I didn't need to because my Faja has the built in bra. So this weekend I actually wore underwire for the first time, one of my old bras and it was too big. Uh, it was just too big around the, the, um, like the band area and the cup was a little too big too so I'm definitely gonna have to go bra shopping I did buy some cute little like bralettes you know like no underwire type of situations and they're cute but I'm just so used to wearing underwire like those don't really feel like real bras to me they're just you know like little things you just throw on but some people don't even wear underwire and I guess if you don't need to then you don't need to and I'm probably in that category now but it's weird because I've never been in that category so yeah I'm still wearing coverage over the girls with my Faja and I just need to go bra shopping so my bra size has definitely shifted it has definitely gone down you started to regret your decision a few weeks ago this was you know this was actually a month ago when they're asking this. All these questions are from a month ago. So they were saying that I had started to regret it because I did express that in my last video and she said, how has that changed now? And right now I can honestly say that I have zero regrets. Like not a single regret. Worth every single penny, every hour of recovery time, even the frustration with these garments and these spas and just all of the things. It definitely worth it and I'm not even at my final like destination yet because my body is still gonna change so much over this next like you know 10 more months so I'm definitely definitely pleased I do not regret it at all I'm so glad I actually just did it and um, yeah if I can encourage anybody who's thinking about it just do it now the one thing I will say is make sure that you are at your goal weight or as close to it as possible before you get it done because this is not a weight loss surgery I definitely want to reiterate that that it is not a weight loss surgery because you will still look the same just with a flat stomach you know what I'm saying so what I've noticed in myself like I obviously 
was a little heavier than my goal weight because I had gained some, you know, some weight over the past like year and a half. And like I can tell because I'm bigger, still up top. I mean, obviously I didn't have any lipo like on my arms or anything like that. So those are things that I like notice now, which I noticed before anyway, but I feel like now because my stomach is smaller, like I'm noticing it more, um, which is not gonna be hard to get rid of once I start lifting again and, you know, making sure my protein and my macros are on point. But you definitely want to be as close to your goal weight as possible before having it. Now, and that's just my opinion because there are plenty of women who do have a tummy tuck and they're not at their goal weight and they're okay with it. Like, so you do you. But that is one thing that has come up for me. I have been more hyper vigilant or I have noticed more the areas that I still want to work on, if that makes sense. I know folks were against you doing this, but how do you feel about yourself now? I feel great about myself. Like, honestly, the people who didn't want me to do it, i that's not my business. If they felt like I shouldn't have done it, that's on them. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I feel good, I am pleased, I have no regrets, and I know that I'm just gonna continue to look better and better. Like, I feel like I look phenomenal right now and I'm still swollen <laughs> like my body is not back to normal yet because it still swells and all of this stuff yada 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 so I'm like when I get to year one like that one year mark I can't even imagine what I'm gonna look like because I feel like I look so good right now I will say that it is a little different looking at myself in clothes and getting used to what I'm looking like now because I think that how you perceive yourself, so much of it is mental and you know, it's like an internal thing. So regardless of what my body looks like, sometimes when I see myself, I still see the imperfections or the things that you know I would want to be different, which is interesting because now I understand how people would always say like, once you start, there's always gonna be something else you wanna fix. And I definitely see that for people who are chasing like perfection. And they're like, no, this is wrong. It has to be right. It has to look like this, yada, yada, yada. Like I totally see how people can get addicted to having this done if they are looking to be perfect because everything is not gonna be perfect. Everything is not gonna be symmetrical and that is okay. I have one boob that is bigger than the other, but I was like that before I had the surgery. Like a, my, my, my incision, I feel like it's higher on one side than the other side. I know that because I noticed the little nitpicky things, but I don't feel like people would, would recognize that if they just saw me out. So it is it's, it's a very interesting slippery slope because I can see how people they just get caught up like let me just get this one tweak let me just do this one thing and it's like it's never going to be perfect like nobody is out here working around looking perfect there's always a flaw somewhere um so yeah I just wanted to mention that because it is interesting now that I'm on the other side I see now how people just keep doing this and doing this and doing this and, and that ain't finna be me what I look like is just what I'm about to look like <laughs> Did surgery disrupt your bladder slash bowel functions? Has it gotten better? So bladder functions, I had no issues with that. I, I did have constipation in the beginning. I was constipated for probably like a week. It took me a full week to have like my first for real bowel movement. I think I had a small one at day five or six, but like at a week, it was like the floodgates were open and I was, drinking you know pineapple juice and i was drinking all these teas and i was eating all this fresh fruit and then i started taking um oh what was the name of those pills some lax not laxatives but like a stool softener i guess is that the same thing i don't know i can't colace i think is what it's called colace i took those for about four days and it took about four days for them to work and once they worked they worked <laughs> and since then like my bowels have been pretty like normal like I've never been a person who has gone every single day um but they is at least every other day like it's very frequent um so yeah like I'm pretty much back to normal now with how often that I go but it initially it was a week of like kind of constipation nothing really coming out and then 
it happened. How long until you can be intimate after the surgery? So I was given the date of three weeks before I could resume intimate activity and we waited our three weeks and you know once the three weeks was up it was back to normal like i'm happy to say that nothing felt different you know like i have watched a couple videos where people were saying sex was gonna feel different and i was like it is it has it has not felt different for me i will say the only difference has been just laying right like you know what i'm saying making sure that i'm situated right so that i'm comfortable like especially in the beginning like i wasn't in a position that was compromising my incisions or anything like that but yeah it was great back to normal <laughs> oh somebody asked about tenderness and i will say that the lipo lipo really hurts like the recovery part of lipo really hurts and i was tender on my back for weeks like i'm still kind of tender on my back and it's from the lipo a little bit of tenderness and a lot of itching like there is like lipo itch is a thing and it's that weird itch because it's like you can't get in it it's like from the inside out is really weird and it's not all day it's not like a constant thing but every now and then i have these bouts of just where i'm just scratching like crazy because i'm itching um but the tenderness in the back took the longest to kind of subside and it's still there but it was like really really bad in the beginning and i feel like every week it just gets better so now at eight weeks like it's very very minimal like if i press on my back and it's mostly like my lower back um because i think they like really just go in on the lower back in the flank area um but now it's definitely not what it was like it would be to the point where i would get up from the chair and it would just just tingle and hurt from me like leaning back on something but it doesn't do that anymore have you gone down a pant size so i feel like yes and no so i did have lipo on my inner thigh in i think inner and outer thighs i believe and because i've still been so swollen i don't know that i've necessarily gone down a size i just will say that my pants fit differently so like all the pants that i've had i tried on a 10 an 8 and a 6 and in all of those pants i've had a gap in the back you know between like my back and the jeans i've never had that gap before i've never had you know yeah, I was never like blessed in the backside area and even though I didn't have anything done to my to my butt like I didn't have a BBL he still removed quite a bit of the fat in that lower back area so now I kind of have a gap in my jeans like they fit really really good like they just fit better but I do need a belt so I think maybe I have gone down a size at least one size because like I literally need a belt with almost 80% of my jeans uh, need a belt because of that gap. It's just like, just kind of loose. So um, yeah, I would say that I've probably, I've probably gone down to a solid six at this point. And I was, I was like an eight, some 10. So yeah, I guess I did go down a size. Do I use any creams to lighten my surgery scars? I'm just using the cream that they recommended that I use. And they recommended that I use it two times a day with the silicone tape for up to seven months. So, um, yeah, that's all I'm using on it. Couple questions about cost. Have I shared the cost? If it's not too personal, how much did it cost? My surgery was over 25K. Um, they vary, they range depending on who you choose as your surgeon and their price range, where you go in the country to get it done, or if you go international. I will say that you could get what I got done for probably half the cost that I paid for it, but you know, it's a personal choice. So I will say it was 25K plus. On top of that, there was the expenses of getting there, staying there because I was out of town. We were there for three weeks. So then there was food and the things that we did while we were there. There was the aftercare, the massages, the fajas. And I will say fajas run you about 80 to 150 each and massages run about the same. 
80 to 150 an hour um so you do the math i told y'all i got about six five highs i've had at least at this point 20 massages um so yeah pretty pricey <laughs> but worth every penny when the surgeon drained the fluid did you have to get more stitches or sutures no so the two follow-up I think I had three follow-up appointments while I was there three or four times I saw the surgeon after my surgery while I was there for the three weeks recovering and two of the times he just took a syringe and drain fluid from the sides of my abdomen. And he just used like some numbing cream. He like injected me with some numbing and then like put some numbing on my um, actual stomach and took a syringe and just drew the fluid from it. So it was just like a poke from the needle. And after he took it out, he gave me like a gauze and I would hold it on there um, until it kind of stopped bleeding a little bit. And then he put a bandaid on it. That was it. Uh, actually, I don't even think he put a band-aid on it because once it stopped bleeding, I just put my faja and stuff on. So, um, yeah, there were no stitches or anything. Like, I've never had a massage where they, like, drain fluid from your incision. I know that that's a thing. I'm not really interested in anybody opening up my, my incision or messing with it. Or anything like that so no he just used a syringe and it was quick and painless and I was on about my way how would you say the recovery is compared to a c-section um, I've had four of them Whew, kudos to you for having four c-sections I will say that the recovery is way worse uh, <laughs> like c-section recovery is one thing but I feel like depending on what you get done in the surgery, like having that recovery all at the same time, like the breast, the muscle repair, and the tummy tuck incision, and the lipo, is just so much more intense. <laughs> like, and I wasn't even in a ton of pain because I kept up on my pain medicine. Like, that kept, they kept me straight with that. But just the uncomfortability and being able to like actually like not you know use your arms and stuff or lift or pull because you've had work done on your breast so you don't want to like you know activate those chest muscles and things like that it just made it more difficult I was way more uncomfortable after having the mommy makeover than I ever was with my two c-sections way more uncomfortable so it's just it's just different um but yeah it's doable but it's different now that you did it do you feel a sense of fulfillment or relief i definitely feel a sense of what is the sense i mean i guess fulfillment is a good a good word like i feel relief that i'm done that i'm over with it that i that the part like i did the hard thing i've been talking about it and dreaming about it and thinking about it for so long it feels great that it's just done um, and now I can just continue to work on making my body look exactly how I want it to. Um, and I don't have to worry about that extra skin there or the diastasis recti. So I definitely feel like, oh, I'm so glad I did it. Like that's the, that's the feeling that I have. Like, man, literally no regrets. I'm so glad that I didn't like chicken out and cancel at the last minute. <laughs> Would you do it all over again? I know you have buyer's remorse, so uh, usually. So I know you usually have buyer's remorse, so I'm wondering, oh, absolutely, in a heartbeat. I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. How long did the surgery take? That's a great question. I think my surgery was, I think it was eight or nine hours. I actually have to ask Babe if he remembers for sure, but they did tell me it would be, like seven hours and then an hour an hour post-op and an hour in recovery so like a total of nine hours together but that's what i thought but i think it could have been seven or eight hours for the actual surgery and then the extra hour each for recovery and post-op um i have to ask babe for clarity because i honestly don't i don't know i have to ask him if he remembers somebody said how long did the doctor say it could take to get the full sensation back like i said he said it could take up to a year um and that's with like everything so some of the numbness that i feel like in my stomach as well and sometimes people like years out say that they still don't feel all of their 
stomach like there's still some numb areas from a tummy tuck so I really just think it depends I think it depends on you and how you heal as a person someone said do your scars itch my scars don't itch my incisions don't itch at all the only places that I itch are where I had like lipo and specifically my lower back because honestly like my thighs don't really itch like that uh my abs don't itch like that it's really just my back i don't know what it is about the lipo on the back but that's where i have found the most of my itching is there a benefit for you or your subscribers if i mention you for referral purposes no i paid all of this out of pocket this was not a brand deal this was not we did not work together or collab this was straight me paying him because i admired his work and i got it done so no i don't get any kickbacks or anything from you referring my name if you tell him I sent you that's great um yeah let him know because I, I would love for him to know that I'm bringing people to him um uh, but I don't get you know like a kickback or anything from it um but I appreciate you asking and I'm 31 and I consider surgery often would you recommend it for someone my age and I would say it's not necessarily your age but where you are in life. I would not recommend this surgery for someone who wants kids and hasn't had them yet. If you have not had kids, if you still plan on having a family, I wouldn't go through any of this until I knew, until you knew you were done with that. Um, I definitely feel like 31 is a good age. I don't feel like that's too young for you to get it done, but I think it just kind of depends on where you are in life. Are you at your goal weight? Do you have kids? Do you want kids? Those are just some things to consider because, you know, it's a pretty big deal. So you kind of want to be at the point where you can do all of these things without fear of something happening to, you know, kind of take back your results in the future. What exercise, if any, do you plan to do when returned? Uh, wait, what exercise plan, if any, do you plan to return to when you're cleared? So right now I'm doing just body weight only exercises, but I'm still doing like a leg day and an upper day. So like, you know, push-ups and I mean, the same type of things that I was doing with my lifting, just without weights. So, you know, squats and lunges and, you know, step ups and push-ups and uh <clears throat> what like dips and uh <laughs> i'm trying to think like hammer curls and bicep curls uh i'm using like a band for like hammer curls and like um shoulder presses and things like that but just no weights so i'm doing the same types of things that i was doing when i'm lifting um and then for cardio i just like to walk for my cardio i get on the peloton i do like a walking class 20 30 minute or like a hike and I'm good to go. But come 10 weeks, I'm starting to grab them weights and I cannot wait. Any tips for anyone wanting a tummy tuck after having kids? My biggest tip for anybody is to do your research. Do your research, fully vet the surgeon, look at all the pictures you can of their work because you want to make sure you're getting exactly what you want and obviously everybody's body is different nobody's going to look the exact same but you can get a really good idea of how their patients look how their scars look how they do their tummy tucks how they do their like how does their breast work look like just make sure you do your research fully and make sure that you are prepared for additional costs those are like my two top tips for anybody considering any type of plastic surgery. And then have help, that's another tip. You cannot do this alone, you definitely need to have help. So make sure you have a solid core group of people, one, two, three, that is dedicated to helping you the first couple of weeks because it's gonna be kind of rough those first couple of weeks and you definitely need all the help you can get. Will you update things in your closet now? Absolutely. So I am, you know, right now it's getting ready to be spring soon. So I'm just going through purging like I normally would. I'm trying to be really cautious about buying a whole bunch of items because my surgeon was very clear. He said, I tell all my patients, don't go buying a bunch of expensive clothes this first year because your body is going to change so much that things are not going to fit come you know eight months nine months ten months down the road of recovery so don't go crazy buying a bunch of like expensive or designer items that 
you are going to potentially grow out of or you know they're gonna get too big for you um so yeah i'm just being mindful about the things there are definitely some things that i want to update i'll probably take a lot of my jeans to go get them tailored so that they fit well um but yeah i think once i get closer down the road of recovery i'll do a little closet refresh i'm always buying something and i'm i plan to have some hauls coming up soon with you know some things that i will buy for like the springtime i think winter i'm pretty set i'm like i'm good in some leggings and a sweater some jeans and a sweater like it's not a whole lot I need to buy for winter at this point because we coming up on spring so come spring I'm sure I will have some hauls for you we got vacations coming up so I gotta buy me some swimming suits which I'm excited about that uh, I haven't tried on any of my swimsuits yet so yeah I'm excited to do all of that so stay tuned for some hauls at some point but I'm not gonna go crazy because I know that I'm still not at the final place where my body is going to be how do you feel mentally and spiritually before and after this after this procedure so how do you feel mentally and spiritually before and after this procedure um i don't feel like there is a difference in how i feel spiritually uh bef before versus after mentally i feel um i feel mentally strong like man i can endure and i can go through you know a lot like surgery recovery is no joke and i think that i recovered really well and i have heard that from people before who you know have had experience with other people going through this and how they've recovered and they're just like man you just look so good for where you are now you've been recovering so well and i attribute that to how I was beforehand like I've always been very active I work out I lift you know so I think that that has a lot to do with how I recover but mentally like I just feel really strong like man I can handle my body can handle I feel I just feel really good um I don't think that I was able to mentally prepare for what I would feel like I definitely had my moments where I regretted it and I was crying and I couldn't believe that I had did this because I didn't like what I was looking like just all of the things I literally felt all of the emotions in those first couple of weeks but I'd say like week three it all started to like come together and I was like okay this is not as bad as I thought it was so I hope that that answers your question how long will you have to wear the faja like I said uh 12 to 16 weeks non-stop and then I can you know try to kind of taper it off some people believe that you will always wear a faja I'm not about that life like I will say that was one of the the big differences that I had with the second massage therapist the one that I found here she's one of those types of people that is like you're gonna be in a faja for the rest of your life and I'm looking at her like girl bye that is not my story okay I didn't spend all this money and have this surgery done so that I can wear a faja for the rest of my life I that's not me um so I say I, I say give it a good three months consistent non-stop wear and then you can kind of like start tapering it off for the next three months because I've seen some people who said they wear it for six months so I'm kind of kind of play it by ear um but come the year mark like I don't plan on ever being in a faja ever again like I might put it on if I feel a little swollen or if I feel like I need to bring my body you know back to speed or something like that but I'm really hoping that the, even by six months that my most of my swelling will have subsided so that I don't feel like I need to have it on like I don't want my body to be so dependent on a faja that I don't know what it's like to not have one on so yeah definitely don't plan to be wearing it forever in a day 12 to 16 weeks is my max because I'm I'm barely hanging on now if I make it to 12 weeks I'll be surprised I'm gonna make it to 12 weeks because I've promised that that's what I'm gonna do I don't know if I'm gonna make it to 16 weeks but 12 weeks after that we just gonna play it by ear. Do you still have to consume a boatload of vitamins? No, I do not take all of those vitamins anymore. All those vitamins were probably, I probably took them for like the first 10 days. And then I had, by that time I had finished them. Cause most of them, some of them I had started like a week before my surgery. And then some of them started right at, at surgery. 
So they were like 30 day supply. So I'd say maybe 10 days for some of them. And then the other few that I had went on for like another couple weeks. So I am completely done taking all of the pills that they prescribed for me, like the vitamin pack and all of that stuff. So now I just take like a regular like multivitamin. Are the results and how things are looking what you expected? And yes, uh, I will have to say that my results line up very very close to what I was expecting and I had expectations based off of the research I did with my surgeon. I have watched countless of his surgeries because he has tons of them on his Instagram page. I've seen so many client testimonials and before and afters so I was very familiar with his work, what his you know incisions look like, how they healed. So yes, like I am so pleased with what my my body looks like and I have to say that my belly button is probably my favorite. I've never had a regular belly button because I had a hernia, umbilical hernia when I was young and I had surgery I think when I was like five or six for the umbilical hernia. So I have never had a normal looking belly button and I just feel like I have the cutest belly button now. Like it's just the cutest thing. It doesn't look like your traditional tummy tuck belly button and it is my favorite. So yes, uh, better than what I expected, honestly. Cause you know, I can only go off of what I think my body's gonna look, off, look like based off of what everybody else looks like. But like actually seeing it, better than I expected. What's my level of pain? Um, as you progress, what's the level of pain? So I would say pain was never more than like, a five for me. I don't feel like I had very much pain. It's it's just to me there's a difference between pain and discomfort. I did have severe discomfort but it wasn't like an aching pain type of thing. I was on pain medication. I probably took pain meds for the first six days maybe a full week and then I just started taking like a Tylenol every now and then if I felt like I wanted to have a Tylenol but like for the narcotics I only took those for maybe a week um but it just it wasn't like pain pain it was just uncomfort um so maybe a six maybe a six if I think about the the discomfort but it's definitely bearable it's not unbearable, um, not at all. At least it wasn't for me, it wasn't unbearable. It was just uncomfortable. And that only lasted, you know, in I'd say the first couple of weeks is where the, the I was the most uncomfortable and then obviously it got better as time went on. I am really losing all of my lights. So I am sorry about the, <laughs> the uh, shift in what this looks like because it is getting dark outside. So I need to hurry up. This video has gone on way too long. Would you recommend surgery? And this is a really interesting question. I mean, I, I'm not sure that it's up to me to recommend it. I think that you have to do your research and you have to come to uh, an agreement, a feeling, a decision on your own. Like nobody can really tell you to get surgery. Like I, I'm not saying anybody should get surgery like you do what you feel like you have to do for you. Some people want to go as far as to have surgery and some people don't. So like that's definitely nothing that I would push on anybody or say you absolutely have to have it done. If you want to have it done, more power to you. If you don't, that's also your decision. So um, I do recommend a quality surgeon. If you're going to get it done, don't skip on your body. Don't take the cheapest route. Don't skimp on your body. Make sure you do your research. That's all I'm gonna say there. What the doctor didn't tell you about recovery that you discovered, um, honestly, it was the lymphatic massages was the biggest part of what he didn't tell me that I have discovered, you know, or that I had to discover kind of like after the fact. I knew a little bit about it, but I really found out about it after the fact. And, um, I think that was really it and the Faja stuff because the garment that they had me in wasn't really doing the compression like it needed to so compression and Faja and doing that the right way and getting the lymphatic massages I had to kind of learn all of that on my own it was not something that my surgeon gave detailed information on no question, but I just wanted to say you look great and thanks for sharing your experience. You are so welcome. And I just hope that this 
that these videos I know they're long but I just really hope that they are helpful because I feel like there's so much research that goes into having a big major surgery like this and you know everybody just doesn't give all this detail so I wanted to make sure I could give all the detail that I could so I hope that this has been helpful to everybody watching whether you're considering it or whether you're just curious are there still activities that are off limits if so what are you not able to do at this point at eight weeks the only thing i'm not able to do is lift weights oh and a bath so i asked my i asked my surgeon about that maybe two weeks ago i think i was at the six week mark and honestly he was like if you can wait closer to three months before submerging in water that would be great so i have not taken a bath yet like soaking in the tub i shower i've been showering <laughs> since like the day after surgery uh but i have not had like a bath yet so i'm just gonna wait i'm not a person who takes a lot of like soaking in the tub baths so um i'm not really missing it but i have had moments where i've been like oh a bath would be nice so i'm gonna wait i'm just gonna wait until like 12 weeks and then right around then i'll be cleared to submerge in water to swim to do all the things like even swimming i think because what was said then when i asked about it is that even though i'm so many weeks out soaking in water for a long period of time can still you know um make the scar susceptible to like opening up again and stuff like that weakening that incision so that's why i was told to kind of just stay away from like soaking until i was closer to the three three month mark but that's it that's all that's off limits last question i finally made it through all of them do you have any do you have to adhere to a special diet no i was not giving any dietary restrictions or anything to adhere to my surgeon did not do that i there could be some surgeons that you know tell you to stay away from this and that like but they didn't give me any you know instructions like that i pretty much have been eating at maintenance since before my surgery eating at my uh, maintenance calories because i wanted my body to heal properly and i knew that going through a major surgery preparing for a major surgery going through it and then recovering is not the time to be trying to lose weight and be in a deficit and i think a lot of women get that wrong they go into the surgery and then they come out and they're cutting everything out they're not eating carbs they're not eating this they're trying to get slim and trim and it's like your body needs all that nutrients so that it can heal itself quickly and properly so i have not you know cut out anything um i have tried to like watch my sodium we have been eating out a little bit more than we should have but like sodium is probably the only thing i kind of look out for or i just know that if i have more sodium or if i have it to eat out i'm probably going to be a little bit more swollen because of that um but no i have not cut out anything i am still eating the way that i was eating i'm still tracking my macros and i'm just eating at maintenance right now i'm not in a deficit um so i i assume that i'll probably go back into a deficit once i start my strength training back like with lifting weights and stuff like that um but yeah those are all of the questions if you made it to the end kudos to you and now i'm actually going to show you guys like what my scar is looking like it is dark in here i'm probably gonna have to take the camera upstairs to the bathroom so that i can show you just kind of like what my incisions are looking like now and how i'm looking like right after eating i did show you in my dress like how i kind of look swollen but I'll probably come up out of all of this so you can see my skin what it looks like and then I'll probably show you what I look like in the morning so you can see like the difference in how flat I am in the morning versus you know it's in the evening it's almost six o'clock in the evening now how I look especially on a day where I have not been wearing my faja so let's get into that so this is what I am looking like right now as you guys can see hopefully you can see pretty good but this is what i am looking like after a full day of not wearing a faja um you know eating i've had a couple drinks like because i went to an event today so this is what the swelling looks like where i said i could 
almost looked like I was pregnant a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Here is a close up of my scar at eight weeks. Look at my belly button. I love, legit love my belly button. But I do have like a light area there on the other side as well right here but overall i am super pleased all the bruising that i had if you remember has subsided it is gone it's easily covered um depending on what i'm wearing but i mean i'm not really worried about it if you see it you see it so i just put my faha on after going all day without it and i wanted to show it to you guys this is the one that I'm using now with the built-in bra. I have my app board in, as you can see, and I have my backboard in. Yeah. I'll see in the goods, but you see this is where it um, stops. This is my thigh faha, comes down to here, and this is the one that I had altered as well. So as you can see, she took it in two inches. Um, my camera died last night mid-sentence, but... As I was saying, you can see where this faha has been altered. It is in the morning, so I'm gonna use the bathroom and come back and show you what my stomach looks like first thing in the morning. This is me, first thing in the morning, and you can probably tell a difference in how the belly is not as big as it was yesterday. Um, but yeah, like, this is how I pretty much wake up in the morning. I have a little bit of, you know, indentions for my camisole and my Bentley board, but those go away. They are not permanent, but they are there first thing when I take it off. I'm also very itchy this morning and very dry, which is something that I forgot to mention is that my skin is still very dry. Like I, I lotion 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 i am moisturizing like crazy and i'm still very dry and i remember that being a thing like right after surgery uh especially like in this area so it's not really this area as much as it is in my belly and i don't know if that's because i have the camisole on all night and then the board on top of it but it's definitely dry and itchy when i come up out of my garments So thank you guys so much for watching. This video was super long because I have had to cover two months of information in this one video. I promise I am not going to go this long before I do another update. And if you have any questions, comments or concerns or things that I didn't cover, things that you still wanna know, feel free to leave those down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.